Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashok. With this video, I am going to start a new video series on Apex Fundamentals in which we will start learning Apex from scratch and as we will move further with more videos, we will cover advanced topics as well. So if you are a student or trainee who wants to build career as Salesforce developer or if you are a already working professional and working as Salesforce admin or in other technologies like Java or C Sharp and now if you are looking your career in Salesforce as a developer then this video series can give you a good start and help you a lot to build a strong foundation in Apex. Alright, now let's have a look on agenda that we will cover today in this video. And this is the first and introduction video. So we will start with what is Apex and after that we will discuss on how does Apex work and we'll try to understand the working model of Apex. And then we will understand when we should use Apex because Salesforce has many built-in declarative tools and using them we can do most of the customizations without code as well but still where and why Apex is required that we will discuss in this point and after that we will see how to get started with Apex development I mean where we can write Apex code and which IDE we can use okay so in this video we will cover only introduction related topics but these topics are must to know for every Salesforce developer and from next video we will jump on programming fundamentals okay now let's start with what is Apex. Then we can say Apex is the strongly typed object oriented programming language that helps to implement our custom business logics in Salesforce apps. I mean Salesforce has many pre-built applications and well-defined process pipeline. So if you want to customize those applications or want to add custom logics in pipeline, then Apex allows developers to add business logics on most of the system events like on button click and on related record updates. And here is strongly typed means in Apex every variable and method has a specific data type and that will be checked at compile time and Apex follows or we can say Apex is based on the object oriented programming concepts such as encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Okay. And Apex mostly has similar syntax to Java. So if you have already worked on Java or have basic knowledge about that then it will be super easy for you to work on Apex. And Apex act like database store procedures, which means Apex is directly integrated with Salesforce database. So we can perform all the database operations like data insert, update and delete directly using Apex core. But if we talk about other programming languages, then there we have to write extra code to connect application with database. But in Apex, it is a built-in functionality and we don't have to write any extra code to work with database in Apex. Okay. And Apex is developed and maintained by Salesforce and only run on Salesforce servers or platform. I mean Apex is the proprietary programming language of Salesforce and it was specifically developed for Salesforce platform. So it won't run out of the Salesforce servers unlike other programming languages Java or C Sharp. I mean we can run Java or C Sharp on any systems including our local system but Apex can only run on Salesforce servers. Okay. So in nutshell we can say Apex is the object oriented programming language that helps to perform customizations on Salesforce apps. Okay. And now let's understand how does Apex works. So to understand this, let's refer a diagram. And in this diagram here, we have two processes. So first is as a developer user and second is as a end user. So now if we start discussion with the developer process. So when developer write and save Apex code on the platform, then before saving that code into Salesforce database, it will reach to the Apex compiler. So we can say Apex compiler is the mediator between developer and database and compiler is responsible to check for any kind of issues in the code like syntax and data type issues and it will generate an error message if any issue found and send back to the developer. So developer can read that error message and work to resolve that issue. So we can say Apex compiler helps developers to check and resolve code syntax issues and once everything is fine then compiler convert that code into executable format. So that code can run on Salesforce platform. And finally, that compiled code gate is stored into Salesforce database in the form of metadata. So this is the one cycle, means developer will write and save the code. Then compiler will check for errors and convert that code into executable format. And that compiled code gets saved into Salesforce database. So this is what happens when we write Apex code as a developer. And now let's understand another flow from end user perspective. So let's say when end user will try to access that functionality, 
for which developer has written apex code then that request will directly come to the apex runtime and now apex runtime will get that compiled free soap code from database and try to execute so we can say apex runtime is responsible for managing the execution of code and ensure it follow all the constraints of the salesforce platform such as governor limits and security constraints and after executing the code it generates the output and finally send that generated output to the end user so this is the flow of apex execution when apex get executed from end user actions like by clicking on any button or through any apex trigger and now if you want to understand this complete flow with an example then let's say we want to get today's date on a button click then developer will write apex code to get today's date and once we'll try to save that code then first apex compiler will scan that code and if everything is fine then convert that code into executable format and finally store that compiled code into database so here developer's job is done i mean developer is completed the code and code gets saved into the database and now let's say when any user will try to click on that button then request will come to the apex runtime and now runtime will identify and get that compiled code from database and try to execute and get today's data as output and finally return that output to the end user okay so this is the kind of architecture on which apex work now i think you have a fair idea about what is apex and how it works so now let's understand when apex should be used so you know salesforce has a generic crm application which provides most of the functionalities pre built but customers generally have their unique requirements on top of generic crm i mean most of the organizations has their different business process or requirements so to achieve those requirements customers want to add or modify some features in the application and salesforce provides many out of box declarative tools to customize pre built applications as per the client's requirement without writing custom code i mean there are many point and click tools available in salesforce to help in customization like app builder process builder flow builder and many tools are there which can help us to modify or build complete application without writing single line of code so before going to write custom code always first we need to check that if that requirement can be achieved using any out of box tool then we should go with that out of box tool but there are some things which cannot be achieved by out of box tools and we need to write apex code for that like to create web services so if you want to integrate salesforce application with third party system using web services then we have to write apex code for that and next to create an email services it means if you want to send emails on a particular actions then we can write apex code for that next we can use apex to perform complex validations or multiple objects i mean simple validations on single object we can apply using out of box tools as well like using validation rules or flows but to apply complex validations or validations on multiple objects we have to write apex code okay and next we can use apex to implement complex business processes those are not supported by other out of box tools like process builder or flows for example to get and process large amount of data from external systems okay so these are few scenarios where we have to use apex but in nutshell if we have a requirement that cannot be achieved through out of box tools then for that we have to write apex code and in real time applications we used to get many complex requirements so where mostly we have to write apex code okay so that's why it is important to learn apex for a salesforce developer all right now let's discuss on next point that is how to get started with apex so before getting started with development of any programming language first we require an ide integrated development environment where we can write and test our code so if we talk about ide for apex then you know apex is the part of salesforce and salesforce is the cloud based software company which has everything on cloud and via internet we can use all the salesforce softwares and platform services like crm software customization tools and development environment so to write apex code generally we doesn't require any ide setup on our local system i mean no software installation is required because apex is save and run on salesforce platform so just we need to have a developer account on salesforce and i am assuming that you have already registered on salesforce as a developer if no then you can use this link and once you will open this link 
then you will see a registration form so you can fill this form by providing these basic details like first name last name and email and in role you can select developer and in company you can type your company name and if you do not have company as of now then you can type anything here and then select your country and type postal code and this username field is important field here we need to provide a unique username so for first time you can provide your email address here and after clicking on this terms and condition checkbox you can click on sign me up button and after this you will get a welcome email from salesforce which includes a reset password link so using that link you can set your passwords okay and now you are ready to log in into salesforce so let's type here login.salesforce.com and provide username and password and click on login and now we have logged in into salesforce and now here as a developer if you want to write code in salesforce then generally we use developer console and that you can open from here by clicking on this gear icon and select this developer console option and once you will click on this then it will open a separate browser window and this is called developer console an online ide for salesforce development which allows developers to write debug execute and test their code and how and where we can write code in this developer console that we will see in next video okay so if you want to write apex code then this is the primary ide provided by salesforce and there are many other options also available as a ide but most primary option is the developer console because it is provided by salesforce and it directly compile and save apex code to the salesforce platform and this is a online ide which works on a active internet connection only but if you want to use any local IDE, I mean offline IDE on your local system, then we have multiple options. For example, Eclipse and VS Code and few more options are there. But most preferred and popular IDE for local development is VS Code with Salesforce extension pack. But as we have discussed, Apex can only compile and run on Salesforce servers. So after writing code on local system, if you want to compile and test then anyhow we have to deploy that code on salesforce platform so as like other programming languages we can't compile and run apex on our local system anyhow to run apex code we have to deploy that code on salesforce platform okay so in nutshell if you want to write apex code then there are many ids available but if you want to quickly write and test code then initially developer console is the best option and we will use developer console in this video series okay so now i hope you have fair idea about what is apex how does apex work and when we should use apex and where we can write apex code right so that's it for this video in which we have covered apex introduction and from next video we will start learning programming fundamentals so if you are new on my youtube channel and want to learn apex in deep with practical examples then please like this video and subscribe my youtube channel so you can get notification for my next videos and please don't forget to share your feedback or questions in comment okay thank you so much for watching i will see you in next video